I am 14, and I built my first PC last week. Everything turned on and all the LEDs worked and all the fans started spinning. However, nothing showed up on my monitor and the QLED on the motherboard was lit up for the DRAM. I put all the parts in PC Part Picker and it said that the parts were all compatible. I bought new RAM, replaced it, and the PC still didn't work. And then I replaced the motherboard and the same DRAM light stays on. I don't wanna take the PC to Geek Squad because I'm sure they'll tell me something is wrong with the RAM and send me on my way. I did think this would be a good video idea because I think it will either be a complicated fix or something really stupid that I haven't slash have done and you can laugh about it after. I'm out of ideas, please help. This is that viewer's gaming PC and here we're gonna try to fix it. Welcome to Fix or Flop my friends, pertinent info is in the video description. If you are new here just know that everything you see us do is free of charge. Even replacing components we do totally for free. Your viewership is super helpful and it allows this playlist to continue running so thank you for that and if you want to give us a small kickback you can support us on patreon even as much as one dollar a month is a huge help all right let's get into this one are you ready stay with me to get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Let's kick things off with a quick recap of what is wrong with the rig before we attempt to power it on and replicate the issue described. That being an amber DRAM LED light, very persistent and prevents the system from posting. So we should expect to see the rig power on, fans spin, LEDs turn on, but again, no signal to our monitor, which means this is just one giant paperweight. By the way, a few other things to tackle toward the end of the video, assuming we can get this rig up and running in the first place. Uh, firstly, cable management is looking pretty darn rough. The viewer was very upfront with me about that. He didn't spend much time on it and knows it looks rather bad. So uh, yeah, we'll make that look a lot cleaner for him. And then also, despite the fact that this case is a, a high airflow case or an airflow oriented chassis, uh, we don't have many fans in here. Actually, I think the only two fans in the rig are the case fans, apart from the ones in the card and obviously the one for the cooler, which I mean, this fan is also not really, it's not really where it should be. Is it, is it intaking air? I didn't notice that. What on earth? He's got a CPU tower fan mounted to the left side of the tower, which is already a bit weird. And it's pulling air in from the left and out the right. And then you've got a case fan here competing for the same air, pushing it this way. So I'm not, I'm not sure, it's just not very efficient. So we're gonna move this to the right side. That's a very quick fix. That way we've got a streamlined flow of air from right to left. Now you'll notice I haven't mentioned specs yet and that's because I've don't think they were even included in the description and that's something we're actually going to make a requirement from now on uh, so if we don't have specifications in the inquiry it's going to be automatically removed from the queue because we just have way too many to deal with first off and then i'm always asking for the specs and it just adds clutter to the text messages we use with the burner number so um, this rig here i believe is an intel rig i think it is a 13th gen cpu and i think it's a b series motherboard it's possible that we're dealing with a BIOS compatibility issue. And I don't think this motherboard has a Q-Flash or Q-Flash equivalent baked in. So let's try powering this on. We'll see if we can replicate the issue described, which again, should just be a no post, probably a DRAM LED or something like that. But I think the first thing I'm gonna check is the CPU and then the motherboard and see if there's a compatibility or potential compatibility problem there. Uh, because that would be a very quick fix. We could just put in a, a 12th gen chip flash the BIOS, update it, and then put his chip back in. Hopefully we had a post then. Uh, the rig is mostly new, so if it's something else, say it's the graphics card, we could very easily RMA that, not a big deal. I noticed the fan curve is not ramping down at all, so that tells me it hasn't even tried to post, and it's probably not a video out problem. Um, I think I'm going to clear the CMOS first. I'm gonna check RAM seating because I do think, yeah, we're getting the DRAM LED. Um, we'll make sure that's okay. We'll try a single stick of RAM from a working kit that I have to rule that out. And then I'm gonna jump straight into the CPU because if this is a BIOS compatibility issue, like I said, it's gonna be a very quick fix. So let's do that. The clear CMOS pins are right here, just under this full length slot. And I'm doing this instead of pushing a button because well, A, I can't find the button. And two, it's usually good to bypass anything mechanical that could fail. That's not to say you could have bad traces around these pins as well. 
but uh, this is as close to the source as we're probably gonna get without removing the battery. Um, and that's usually behind the graphics card, which I don't wanna remove if I don't have to. A few moments later. And that quickly failed, not much of a surprise. So now we're going to remove his DRAM and install a known and working single stick from my stash. We're working with a DDR4 platform, mind you. Remember 12th and 13th gen is interchangeable depending on the board you buy. So we're gonna use a single DDR4 stick from Corsair's Vengeance lineup. But regardless of the slot I try, my working stick doesn't actually work, which tells me it's not actually a DRAM problem in the sense that it's not the stick that is to blame. I've seen this again multiple times. I know you guys have as well if you've been watching this playlist. I feel like a lot of other issues default to DRAM uh, when you could have, let's say, a bent pin or something along those lines. Maybe that's affecting the way that the CPU communicates with memory. Uh, maybe you have a BIOS incompatibility and it just defaults to the DRAM LED. Some manuals might specify uh, that there are multiple reasons why that LED could be showing up apart from DRAM, but it is very misleading to have that show up for so many different issues. What I'm going to do is rip this cooler off next and see what CPU we're working with and then check the motherboard because I still don't know what board we're working with and we'll go from there. A few notes while doing this, thermal paste looks fresh and it looks like a healthy amount was used. The CPU is a Core i5-13600KF. Okay, so no integrated graphics here and it is a 13th gen chip. Now let's check the motherboard. Ooh, and one thing I just noticed here, trying to remove the card so we could see what board this was, this cable slides straight out. So this wasn't fully secure. This is one of the reasons why a lot of that stuff was happening around the, around the time these cards came out, right? People weren't slotting these all the way in. More or less user error, even though the cable does suck in my view. Um, you've got to make sure that this is firmly clicked all the way in. You shouldn't be able to pull it out without pulling on that tab below. Thankfully, potential disaster averted there. This card, by the way, is an RTX 4070 Ti from Gigabyte. It's a very clean card. Again, it's pretty much brand new, and it's not going to pull anywhere near as much power as a 4080 or 4090 equivalent, but you still want to be careful with that connector. And this board, would you look at it, is an H670 Pro Wi-Fi D4. The D4 just stands for DDR4, let you know it's a DDR4 compatible board. Uh, this obviously is not a Z-series chipset. Um, it's not B either. You usually see like a B-series chipset here. This is a, a pretty stripped down board. Nothing wrong with it per se, uh, but the fact that you have an overclockable SKU paired with a locked chipset board doesn't make the most sense. Um, and this could very well be our issue, right? Uh, whatever BIOS is on this board prevents 13th gen from posting. It'll depend on when this board was manufactured and shipped. We're gonna check that right now. To clarify, by the way, B-series chipsets are lower on the totem pole than their H-series counterparts. All other things equal. Not sure why I thought that wasn't the case. It's been a while, just give me a break. Anyway, uh, the CPU is overclockable, but the chipset does not allow it to be overclockable. So you're kind of spending more money for no reason in that sense. But there are some other advantages of choosing this, the, the 13600. Uh, or 13600K over, say, a 13400. So not the end of the world. Just know you won't be able to overclock manually. It does look like this board came out a lot earlier than 13th gen was released. So it's very, very possible we have either a first release BIOS or something that came out in early 2022. There is a BIOS here that marks the inclusion of 13th gen processors in the BIOSes, and that was around, looks like, August or September of 2022. I'm going to give him the latest up-to-date BIOS, and I'm going to obviously have to swap in a 12th gen working chip right now to even get it to post and get into the BIOS so we can flash this because this H series board does not have a Q flash function from what I can tell. So now I've got that latest revision on the root of our thumb drive. We're gonna swap in a known working 12th gen Intel chip I have on hand. This is just a 12500. Easy does it, nice and gently. Now the socket, by the way, looks very clean. No bent or missing pins. The underside of his CPU also looks great. And we're pretty much just gonna jump straight into this. I know I'm not doing the same sort of due diligence I usually do before jumping to swapping CPUs and upgrading BIOSes. I just have a really good feeling that's what this is. In fact, I'm, I'm hoping that's what it is because if it's not, then it means we probably have a dead CPU or motherboard or even a dead graphics card. We haven't even really touched the card much, but I put all of that original stuff back in here to see if we could get that post. If we do, then that tells me it is probably just a BIOS update. So we can kill a lot of birds with that one stone here. We're gonna power it on. The DRAM LED has turned off. That's a really good sign. Come on, come on, give us something. Oh, oh, boot lights on. Look at that. 
That's all it was, just an incompatible BIOS. By this point, I hadn't even checked like the, the, the cabling. I, I didn't even strip things down as far as they would go because I just, I had this hunch. Um, and that's something that, you know, you'll be right about sometimes and wrong about sometimes, but in an effort to save time, maybe you feel like it's worth just diving into this one possible solution. And uh, in this case, it definitely paid off. So what we're gonna do is load into the BIOS and I've got the thumb drive with the image already on it. We're gonna update the BIOS, swap his CPU back in. At that point, we should be golden. I don't think we're gonna have anything else to worry about here. It looks like every other component in his rig is working. We would expect all of that stuff to work because it's all brand new. And sure enough, this BIOS version is far too old to be supporting 13th gen Intel. So our suspicions have been confirmed. Now I know I say this all the time, but while this BIOS is updating, please do not turn the system off. It's not going to be a fun time. Uh, you're going to have a bricked board if you don't have a backup BIOS. And unless you have maybe like a custom flashing tool or a replacement BIOS chip, this board will be bricked. Case in point, I've been there. <laughs> don't do this during a thunderstorm. That's the rule of thumb. So now that we're back up and running with a much more recent BIOS, again, the latest stable revision. I don't do beta BIOSes for customer rigs. We're going to swap his CPU back in, restart, and see if we get back to this splash page. If we do, mission accomplished. And here we go. Moment of truth. We've got his uh, CPU cooler, or the fan, sorry for the cooler, on the correct side this time. I still want to tackle cable management after this, and I also want to add a little something to help uh, spruce up the airflow a bit. It looks good so far. Yep, Amber DRAM light is off. We should be getting a post. There it is. That's it, a freaking BIOS, piece of cake. So now that we've gotten this set up here, we're going to, I think first we're gonna throw in the goodies. I think I'm gonna give them three Silent Wings Pro 4 fans from Be Quiet. We're gonna put them all up front so we'll have a bit of positive pressure on the inside, but a lot more airflow to work with, a lot of fresh air to keep these components nice and cool. The CPU tower in particular is not super beefy. This is like a Hyper 212 Black Edition or something along those lines. So um, even for a 13400K that's not being overclocked manually, it's still probably gonna run a bit hot. Uh, so getting that extra air in here will probably be a big help. And whoops, I already got the name wrong. <laughs> We've worked with the Silent Wings Pro 4s already in the past. These are the Silent Wings 4s, which uh, are just slightly stripped down, but they still have a lot of great features like the six pull motors. They're still extremely quiet. PWM support, and you get these in 120s or 140s. And in case you haven't noticed, Be Quiet has decided to re-up with us for the Fixed Fault playlist as our product sponsor. That's not to say that they'll be the only sponsor products ever on the playlist. Uh, even this year, but uh, they have committed to a long-term relationship with us for this one. And it's a huge help. Not only does it allow us to provide free upgrades and free components for viewers, uh, even when they aren't needed, as is the case here, uh, but it also does provide a monetary injection, a financial injection for the channel to allow us to continue doing this and providing others uh, with upgrades and replacement components when manufacturers themselves can't step in directly. For instance, when we have to buy replacement motherboards on eBay because the boards are a bit older and aren't being produced anymore or sold on Amazon or Newegg. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute to mention that if you guys want to show them some love via the comment section below or via the link in the description, that would be a huge help. Thanks again to them and thank you for you guys for watching this video. So like I said, I think I want to install all three of these Silent Wings 4 fans up front for the best airflow. And again, these are high CFM units, making them great for cases like the Corsair 4000D airflow, as well as Be Quiet's own PeerBase 500DX and FX. Oh my goodness, these look so, so good. Really like the way these look, super clean, all blacked out, and very quiet. And one last thing, while we're on the topic of fans, I'm gonna lower this one at the rear so that it's more in line with the tower cooler for the CPU. I think that's gonna be the best for getting rid of a lot of that hot air coming from here. 12 seconds later. All right, and a bit of cable management magic. It's really not that hard, honestly, folks. It's, it's, it's not, just spend a few minutes You'll find that this case especially has a lot of cable management headroom behind the motherboard tray. Clean things up here, keep things nice and tight. No loose cabling of any kind, unless it's intentional, if you have custom cables or something like that. This to me looks a lot better now, and uh, we've got things routed where they should be. So that's that. The rig works again, that's the most important thing. We uh, swapped a few areas of concern, including that uh, fan placement for the CPU cooler. We added additional fans for more airflow, courtesy of Be Quiet. Be sure to check out the Silent Wings 4 linked in the video description. I'll also put Silent Wings Pro Force if you're interested there. And uh, yeah, I mean, this ultimately just came down to an unfortunate instance where 
you need a previous gen CPU to even upgrade the BIOS to use the latest gen CPU that you wanted to use in the first place. This has been the case for several years with AMD. And up until recently, being able to flash a BIOS or update it without having a previous gen compatible CPU, um, it just hasn't really been possible. With BIOS flashback now, a lot of newer boards, a lot of more expensive boards, frankly, will have that capability. You can flash without a CPU at all. We have a video that details how to do that step by step. I'll have that link below. Uh, but in this case, we had to use an older compatible chip it, that we had no choice, really. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that was really all it was. We didn't have to replace any expensive hardware. We didn't have to order anything online and wait a week or two. This was about as clean as it gets. With that, if you'd like to be a part of this playlist in the future, say you have a broken rig and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, you'd be willing to drive here to not only drop the system off, but also pick it back up. And I'm not gonna be able to do that in 12 hours or less. You're probably gonna have to make two trips. It is what it is. I'm very busy, as I'm sure many of you are as well. Um, I, I suggest you sign up. So if you meet those criteria, be sure to use that uh, submission link. It's gonna be near the top. You'll see it's tied to our website directly. I think it's through gregsalazar.com. And uh, there you can submit photos of your rig specs and uh, yeah, a description. Try to keep it brief if you can of what is wrong and maybe things you've already done to attempt to solve the issue. Uh, in this case, uh, if I recall correctly from the description, the owner had already replaced the RAM thinking it was the RAM. And again, this is just an unfortunate series of events where like a, a debug LED leads you down a pathway that it really shouldn't because this wasn't a DRAM problem really at all. It was just a, a microcode issue, it was a BIOS issue. So um, really glad that it didn't require any more replacing of hardware. It's just unfortunate that it came to that point where he felt like he had to do that. Um, the rig's up and running now though. It runs quiet as ever. Gonna have great airflow, uh, cleaned up cable management, and yeah, I think it looks really nice. This is a well-balanced rig. Apart from maybe the discrepancy with the chipset and the CPU, this thing is going to shred frames in games. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that support. Again, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can do so via the Patreon link below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Consider joining our public Discord server. That's totally free of charge. You can contribute there, ask questions, help others, even if you're, in, uh, if you're up for it. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.